What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So today's video is going to be uh, not a vlog update. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to be taking a look at different bowling releases and how to create different ball motions just by changing your hand instead of just changing bowling balls. I'll see you guys inside. All right guys, so today what we're going to be talking about is how do we change ball motion just by using our hand. Uh, there's going to be different types of releases we're going to be using up the back of the ball or straight if we can do it and then a little bit of rotation and then you know about 45 degrees of rotation and then from there we're going to try and do the maximum amount of rotation which is about 90 degrees. Now growing up bowling how I learned to change my release is by thinking of my hand as the face of a clock. If my hand has the ball on top of it so palm facing the ceiling and my hand is facing straight forward so kind of like this straight up and down that's 12 o'clock. If my hand is a little bit to the left that's going to be 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Okay, so we're going from 12 o'clock, 10 o'clock, let's just call it, and then 9 o'clock. Those are basically the three different positions that I use to change my hand position on the ball and to change my release. Now, the other position that you can work on as well to get the ball to go as flat as possible or as straight as possible is 1 o'clock. Now, not a lot of people have flexibility in your wrist to get your wrist to go back this way, but if you can get to that 1 o'clock position, it's going to cause your hand to come off the ball as straight as possible and it's going to really flatten out that ball and get it to go almost dead straight down the lane. So as far as the different hand position to use for which situation, if I'm trying to get the ball to read the front part of the lane and basically tell me where the friction is at and where I need to be at, I'll use the 12 o'clock position. That's kind of my standard release nowadays because I have been practicing staying up the back of the ball. So I'll go 12 o'clock. That's going to cause the ball to read friction and just come off the back of the pattern nice and smooth. It's also gonna cause continuation through the pins. If I'm trying to get a little bit more length out of my ball, now, you know, let's say I'm trying to get through an area of friction that I know is in the head, the heads, I'm gonna take my hand and change it to the 10 o'clock position. This used to be my more standard release when I first started bowling again. Now it's kind of something that I'm learning how to use again. So 12 o'clock for up the back, read the friction, come off the pattern smooth, 10 o'clock for get through the friction and come off the pattern a little bit harder. Now, if I'm trying to get the ball to get as far down the lane as possible before I see a reaction out of the ball, that's where we would use the nine o'clock position. Now, as far as using the nine o'clock position and the ability to do so, there's not a lot of bowlers that can. Um, one of the professionals that I know for sure that uses 90 degrees of rotation a ton was uh, PDEW back when he was bowling on tour. I mean, he's still bowling the senior tour, but uh, yeah, he's not bowling as much as he used to do, but he always used that maximum rotation release and he made good success out of it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get my equipment out on the lanes and I'm going to show you the three different hand positions I use, well really four, because we got one o'clock, 12 o'clock, 10 o'clock, nine o'clock. And I'm gonna show you what kind of ball motion that is. The thing that's gonna help you understand this is paying attention to ball motion from the front part of the lane to the back part of the lane, not so much looking for right to left because that might trick your brain a little bit into thinking that the ball's doing something different than what the release is telling it to do. So looking for that ball motion from front to back is more important than from right to left. Now, as far as the right to left motion, the smoothest right to left motion should be up the back of the ball. It's just gonna roll and come off the back pretty nice and smooth. Uh, as far as more of a snappy, uh, reaction to the friction, that's where the 10 o'clock and the 9 o'clock positions come into play. Before we get started, uh, just to let you guys know, I'm going to be standing in the same spot on the lane, which in this case is going to be standing at the 30th board on the approach. I'm going to be aiming in the same spot. So we should see clear differences between the different release on the ball and the, the difference it makes in the ball motion as the ball gets down the lane. Okay guys, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the 1 o'clock, if I can achieve it, <laughs> or the 12 o'clock position with my fingers. Now, that is a position that I've been practicing a lot because I have been bowling on tougher patterns, so I'm gonna do my best to achieve it. Um, what we should see from the ball is we should see it read the friction from front to back really smooth. When it gets to the break point, it's just gonna set and roll forward. It's not gonna do anything crazy. It's not gonna jump hard. We might see a little deflection out of the ball depending on how the lanes are today. Or we could see more continuation through the pins. I don't know, let's see what it looks like. So what you saw there on that shot was basically as flat as I can get my hand. <laughs> this is one of the main reasons why I use a spare ball. Because with my rev rate as a two-hander, 
and especially considering that I cannot get my hand any flatter, it makes a big difference with the reactive ball. You do see a lot of players, especially on the professional level, using the same ball to shoot their spares instead of switching to like a plastic or even a urethane spare ball. However, I will mention, most of those players are the one-handed players who have the ability to really get that wrist opened up. Two-handers don't really have that capability simply because of the style of our game. Our swing always has our hand cupped under the ball, so when we release that ball, it's coming off our hand with maximum amount of revolutions, no matter if it's straight or if it's got a little bit of rotation to it. So, we're gonna move on to the 12 o'clock position, and we're gonna try and see what the difference is there. All right, so with that shot, you could see that I was trying to get as close to 12 o'clock as I could. Obviously, that still imparts quite a bit of rotation on the ball. As you saw, the ball read the front part of the lane, and when it came off the back end of the pattern, it just basically rolled straight and took out the six pin. Okay, so, so now we're gonna move on to the 10 o'clock position. Now, 10 o'clock for me is the most comfortable hand position. It's the hand position that I use, I would say, 80% of the time, unless I need to do something different. Now we're talking about league, of course, when I come bowl league. Um, so when I get up there and throw the ball, what we should see out of the ball is we should see it get through the heads and start to read the mid lane. So this is going to be past the arrows. That's when you'll start to see the ball react to the friction on the lane and you'll see the core start to migrate the ball into its roll phase. Now as far as motion off the spot, you should see definitely more right to left motion. The ball is going to have a faster response to the friction. And again, depending on how the lanes are playing today, you might see it go to the pocket and drive through it. You might see it go to the pocket and bounce off. So let's get it out there and see what it looks like. Okay, so there was the hand position of 10 o'clock, or what I felt was pretty close to it. As you can see there, the ball got definitely a lot more length through the heads, started reading the mid lane, and when it hit the break point, it really came off the pattern pretty hard. Had decent continuation through the pins. We left a stone seven pin, so that was just kind of bad luck of how the pins fell. All right, okay, so now we're gonna move on to the nine o'clock hand position. Now, nine o'clock is something that I've been working on as well because it's definitely another release that I'm not exactly the greatest at. When I was a one-handed bowler, nine o'clock was easy just because the way I learned to bowl, you know, was totally wrong. <laughs> so I've, I put in a great deal of effort to get out of the habit of rotating around the ball like that. So uh, what we should see as far as ball motion when I get the ball out there, um, we're gonna see it get the maximum amount of length through the heads. It's actually gonna skid through part of the middle part of the lane as well, and it's gonna start reacting closer to the break point. As far as right to left motion is concerned, we're gonna see the maximum amount of response off of the friction. So you're gonna see that ball go really, really long and then just hit hard. All right, so there was an example of the nine o'clock hand position. You know, as far as me personally, the two positions that I find the absolute hardest to achieve consistently is nine o'clock and one o'clock or 12 o'clock. My most comfortable hand position is about that 10 o'clock range. Um, and that's something I've been really working at getting better at because obviously during tournaments, you have to be really good at adjusting your hand position at the proper time. For the up the back hand position, which is the one o'clock or 12 o'clock position, it's definitely better to use that type of a release when you need the ball to read the lane very clearly. Um, when let's say the back ends are really fresh, there's no carry down after the tournament has started or something like that, and you need to control the back end, that's when you would use up the back of the ball. Now, if you're trying to control the front part of the lane, that's when you would use more rotation, you know, more of a 10 o'clock. You want that ball to get through the front part of the lane to the spot and have a decent motion off the back and a little bit more uh, bounce off the uh, break point. Now, as far as the nine o'clock position, obviously there's really two different scenarios where you could basically use the nine o'clock or the maximum amount of rotation. Um, my two different scenarios are if I really need that ball to get through a lot of friction in the front part of the lane. So for example, it's really late in a tournament qualifying block, the lanes are starting to really dry out and you need something to just get really far down the lane, that's when I would go to that. The other thing you can do if you have enough ball speed is you can also use that hand position to play really right and get that ball to go straight down the lane and come off the spot really hard for 
a decent amount of entry angle. But if you don't have enough speed, you're going to run into the situation where that ball is going to always want to cross over the head pin. You'll never make it to the pocket. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me for today. Uh, we did something quite a bit different than normal, obviously. Uh, going forward with the channel, I'm going to kind of change things up with how many videos I'm releasing and the type of content they have just to make the channel a little bit more interesting, hopefully. Uh, whenever I bowl league, that's going to be a vlog video. Uh, whenever I bowl a tournament, that's going to be a vlog video as well. So look for updates for Road to the PBA on Wednesdays during the week and over the weekends when I have tournaments. Now, I don't have any tournaments coming up until November 7th, so the next tournament vlog update won't be until then. Um, but the next league vlog will definitely be this coming Wednesday. So uh, beyond that, as far as uh, videos on the channel, I'm going to try and do at least maybe once or twice a week kind of a coaching video or, you know, uh, maybe something you didn't know about bowling video, something like that. I'm trying to get some different kind of content out there to make it a bit more interesting. So today we talked about releases. You know, how do we change our ball roll with our hand positions and how do we change the reaction on the lane and when should we use those? So the next video coming out is going to be on Wednesday for league and then the one after that will be on Friday. So thanks for watching guys. Please do not forget to like, comment and subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so you get notification of my future releases and we will see you guys on Wednesday.